Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are and when you're watching this, it's a lovely day out there. Nice sun for a perfect shoot. Look what we have in the background. That's the RS7. If you've been driving automobiles and reviewing vehicles, nothing gets you steering than a vehicle like this. But there's something which is much more exciting than this one. Let's go and see what it is. So the vehicle we're going to review today is the Audi e-tron. This is the e-tron 55 version. They have two motor options, e-tron 50 and e-tron 55. Love this color. It is quite striking. They have a sport back version where it's more like a coupe. Love those orange brake calipers. So it has charging ports on both the sides. One is on this side and you can open it by pressing this button. It is a CCS2 standard, so universal. And you can close it by pressing that button. The other one's on the other side, same case. Just love how the front portion is designed and this is one of those cars which doesn't shout I'm an EV. This looks like a regular Audi SUV which is a good thing because people love Audi SUVs at least here in India and Hyderabad. But just in terms of proportions I think this is the best electric SUV that I've come across because the I-Pace looks more crossover, the EQC is kind of compact and doesn't look like the typical Mercedes SUVs. But this is built ground up with EV in mind. It's, it's not like, let's say my Tata Nexon, which is a regular, which you get in petrol, diesel, and then you convert it into EV. One thing that's pretty unique with Audi that you can't get anywhere else is their focus on lighting. The front and rear lights have this unique animation where they move towards the end of the vehicle when you start it. And that's so fun to watch and entertaining, man. They have projector lights, which project Audi and e-tron logo onto the wall. And these headlights are one of the brightest that I've seen. So it has safety features too, so that the oncoming traffic is not blinded, but for your lane, for your section, it illuminates it perfectly. And you get ambient lighting, you can change it to different customizations. And even this e-tron logo is also lit up. I can only show it to you to some extent, but you have to experience it in person. Chalo, now it's time to go ahead and drive this and see how it feels. I'm super excited to see how it performs on the road. this floating rest pad where which is used to shift gears so you use this button to shift gears to reverse neutral or drive and the park button is on the side this is only to rest your hand it doesn't move this is the only thing that moves so if you want to get sporty and shift you can't do with this one or this one also. and this is an electric handbrake you have parking in case you want to see the 360 view of the camera different options, different angles of the camera are also available. This shows the brake lights too. And if you can see, it even shows if the lights are on. Crazy, right? But this is active till a speed of 20 to 25 kilometers per hour. So let's put it in drive. This has eight drive modes. So we'll have it in the 
most comfortable option which is comfort mode and you can raise or decrease the suspension height because this has dynamic suspension chalo we are ready to go like most evs the first thing that you notice in this car is just how silent it is and all you can hear is the ac blower noise that is also at 21 degrees so not too loud but still it is eerily silent like even though the nvh levels are pretty good you can still hear some suspension and road noise coming in but that's like me make picking it is just super silent refined easy to use comfortable and today being an e world ev day i'm just fortunate to drive this which i think is the best electric suv out there besides the silent nature you're wrapped in luxury and comfort and sometimes you can't associate that with evs and as i said earlier if it looks like any other audi suv which is a great thing because a lot of people would be interested in buying audi suvs i have had experience of not only sitting and driving a q8 and this looks very familiar for me you don't need to calibrate your thoughts about an EV when you first see this it has air suspension and it can go up by 35 mm with the stock ground clearance being 200 which is pretty good for our conditions the braking is pretty good in small speeds it is much more adaptive i have the region at the highest mode so even if i leave the throttle for a second it can come to a halt in a few meters so the braking feels much better than what it was what i experienced in another audi that would be a qwait i haven't driven many audis but from my short experience Uh, the, if you have it in highest region mode, the braking is pretty sharp. On the higher speeds, it takes time. I think it's not to do with the bite; it's just the feel that you get uh, in the pedal. It feels like it's coming little late, but that's nothing wrong. It's just that it has brake assist too. So if you press it hard, it will stop quickly. Nothing to do with lack of braking uh, power or anything. So before we go ahead and test the power of this car, let me get few facts out of the way. So this has 408 horsepower and 664 Nm of torque. This can do 0 to 100 in approximately 5.8 seconds, which is probably one second slower than the I-Pace, which is not a huge thing because this is not oriented for performance like the I-Pace. This can wear so many clothes, like it can at one time be a comfortable SUV like it is now. I'm hardly feeling any any bump on the road. and then it can wear a sports car clothes where if you lower the suspension down put it in dynamic mode which i'll do in a little while this can feel very sporty and it can also do handle off roads which we will test for a short bit not too much so there's more like an all purpose suv that any member in your family can use and in comfort mode it is giving me a efficiency of 4.3 kilometers per watt hours which is pretty good for a car that weighs 2800 kilos guys like IPS was 2200 so you on paper this might feel heavy but it is it manages it or carries it pretty well so we have uh, two motors one in the front and in the back so it's a permanent all wheel drive system out of the eight modes i think one is a customizable mode where you can adjust the steering the suspension and also the driving dynamics so i've kept it in off road mode these are some of the nastiest of bumps that you can get i'm like perfectly comfortable in this car hardly feel any bumps or anything with the e quattro system it can definitely handle the off roads that we have in hyderabad so if it can pass through that section it can go through most of the roads in india so there is probably a safe environment to do a 0 to 100 run 3 2 1 I don't know how many seconds it did that zero to hundred run, but it felt exciting. And these seat belts have pretension, so they kind of get snug, so they hold you. That's a safety feature that they have. It was exciting air. So after multiple runs of zero to hundred and quick in-speed accelerations, the range is hovering around three point five kilometers per kilowatt hour. That's pretty decent. That's probably the lowest you can expect. It won't go below that in real world. Whatever the certified range was the real world range would be anywhere between 325 to 360 kilometers which is quite good i think with the current charging setup in india you can kind of do an india tour in this vehicle maybe some places you might have to stop overnight but if you put it in economy mode you will easily get 450 kilometers we need at least 400 kilometers of range to do highway runs because anything lesser than that it just feels like a short trip before you stop for fast charging or stay overnight 
So we talked about performance, we talked about range, we talked slightly about comfort and at least the front seats at the ride is pretty comfortable. The seats are have nice cushion and bolstering. So the back seat comfort is pretty good. Like we are going through some bumpy roads, cement roads. These are not the most softest roads. Hyderabad has this weird fascination with cement roads. They last long but still they are one of the most bumpiest of roads. And on these bumpy roads if you're going anywhere little over than 20 kilometers per hour you can feel the bumps. And as you can see, the car is moving quite a lot, but I'm pretty comfortable. It's the suspensions doing, taking much more than what you can see in the video. And in that regard, the rear seat comfort is good. You have good under thigh support, not the most in typical SUV language, but from the cars that I've seen, uh, be it uh, GLS or GLE, uh, this is probably quite comfortable. And you get enough legroom uh, where you can stretch your legs quite a lot. There is no recline function though, so it's just uh, one position for the back seat and it's not upright enough, it is comfortable. The window line is not too high or too low, it is at a good height and it comes with integrated blinds. You also get AC vents here at the back where you can control the volume of airflow and you get four zone AC, two at the back, two at the front. You get controls, AC controls here too, so multiple options and the sunroof is not the biggest in the class, but still a panoramic sunroof which works for me. On a whole, a very comfortable ride seat. So, so you can definitely do long rides on this. So there is a bit of body roll. It's not always sharp. If you increase the suspension to the highest setting, obviously there will be some body roll. This is an SUV which weighs 2800 kilos. So definitely don't expect sports car like dynamics it's something better than the q8 that uh, that is just the baseline example that i can give it in q8 i can feel much more body roll probably not a good comparison but that's the only reference i have in terms of helping you understand how the ride quality is i pace felt much more sportier because it is smaller lighter and it's lower too because it's a crossover whereas this is a true SUV so expect different dynamics if your preference is a comfortable SUV which can occasionally go fast this is perfect the handling is good too because in general with EVs the batteries are very low the center of gravity is better so it handles most EVs handle better and this is no exception and I've been pretty impressed with how quick it is able to turn with such weight and how easy it is to turn the steering weighs up well in slow city speeds like I'm doing now it is very easy so I can do single finger maneuvers but when I go certain high speeds it is weighing up pretty well so we have covered some of the major points performance range ride handling comfort at the back seat Features and design is something I'll cover once I'm back at the showroom. But I wanted to cover one important point which is about the charging and charging infrastructure. So this has an onboard charger of 11.2 kilowatts and they would install I think a charger at home which is capable of 22 kilowatts but because this has only 11.2 it will take anywhere between 8 to 9 hours currently to charge this car. The updated batch which is coming will have a 22 kilowatt onboard charger so that will charge this car in anywhere for uh, in anywhere between four to five hours at home which is pretty fast outside the city the highest we get are there are few 60 kilowatt chargers but typical tata chargers are 25 kilowatts so they would take four hours for a full charge you can still travel you just have to plan your ride if you charge for one hour you would have enough range for 150 kilometers which is good enough so in terms of charging and charging infrastructure you're sorted in city highway is still a long way to go but Yes, you can still use starter chargers to do some short high runs. So that's the first boot up and the moment you start the car, the seats move ahead and when you turn off the car, the seats go back. The moment I open the door, slightly the door moves back so that the ingress and egress is easy. So this is how the cockpit, the driver cockpit looks. So you have a lovely digital driver instrument display. You can control everything through the buttons here. These are actual buttons, not touch sense to buttons like you get on the iPace. So if you click on view, the dials become bigger. If you press it again, they'll become small. You can use the arrow buttons to change the center screen. And within the center screen, you can use the scroll button to go up and down. It's a very well laid out steering wheel and the digital driver display is also fully feature packed. You get paddle shifters, but these only control region. So that's at level one, level two. That's it, only two levels of region. And you have here the uh, infotainment system. 
this is common across quite a few audis but the touch response is pretty good this is the most important one because this controls the audi driver select controls the drive modes where you can raise the suspension like one click the suspension can go up and this screen is purely for air conditioning so you get four zone climate control individually customizable to different uh, types decent uh, storage here maybe a phone you get wireless charging here but not wireless carplay it's going to come soon what else do we have we have a physical volume control button so you get bang and olufsen eight speaker system 700 watts and you get a nice e-tron projection from the door cool na and you get it on all four doors by the way so the glove box storage is quite decent some felt material here card storage but deep there not bad so all the materials that you touch in the car are pretty high quality and that's pretty obvious if you're spending almost 1.2 crores right nice leather wrapped steering wheel soft touch materials here here and here also you get soft touch materials this is leather this can be customized to three types this is aluminum and i think you get gray and wood finish one thing that's not available on this one is this is a borderless rear view mirror but it doesn't have that camera view that you get on the i pace and subtle touches like this illuminated seat belt holders make a huge impact here like i wish they could close allow us to close the section unfortunately it's always open another futuristic bit is you get only usb c no usb a port anywhere in this car one thing we didn't talk about is the boot capacity decent storage it's electronically operated with hydraulic struts you do get a space saver tire but that takes up a lot of space and the batteries are quite high so you get lose some storage you get hooks here and i think tie down points and nets for storage so very well organized storage space here and the boot lip is almost flat so it's not that tough taking bags outside and the front also has boot capacity it's called frunk decent storage to put the charging cable and all yes that can take at the most charging cable and few small things here and there but still a good space to have instead of nothing right i thoroughly enjoyed my test drive and i hope you enjoyed the video you tried to do my best in terms of showing you all the elements that i find are important we can't go into every detail because that would probably take 3 hours because the car is loaded to the brim with features this video was supposed to come by wednesday it says that things got delayed i had to reshoot few things like 3 4 times and eventually the video is done hopefully you like it let me know what you think in the comment section and if you like that video don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it is a great motivator to do better and this video took me almost what 20 24 hours to edit sometimes the hard work won't be visible it's just that we want to give you the smoothest output possible thank you so much so see you in the next one bye bye